welcome back to our journey through FF13, which is likely to be the penultimate episode of this journey as we have reached the end game. I was so excited for this, especially after FF12. And like what the best end game I've seen in any of the FF games has been 12. And what was their next evolution of that? Certainly seeing what happened in 15, which has a decent end game. I was very excited for it. But let's get there. Um it's a little bit of a shame that the story campaign kind of comes to a pitter-patter in terms of content for the story itself in the last section. Of the seven hours we played that we'll be covering today, five of them were spent just getting from the start of the chapter to the end of the chapter, which is just overblown with enemies every few steps and very complex fights that if you press the wrong button at the start of the fight, you just die uh, and you've got to retry and do all that. You can skip all these fights. I'm fully aware of that. You can run past them. That would be like a speedrun technique. Technique. In a first time blind casual playthrough, you're not going to do that. So I choose not to do that. Um, so I, I fought them out and they're just, it's jam packed. Very hard enemies. A lot of them take a few minutes to kill. But it is what it is. Uh, not particularly exciting in terms of story advancement, unfortunately. It's just a case of getting through it uh, to get where you want to go as you wade your way through Cocoon. It was nice to see some of the old favorites who should be dead, but they're back. Like Lebro, we missed Lebro. And the rest of Nora, uh, uh, Snow's fighting force of Nora uh, returns to open a door for us and then disappears again. It's just like, hey, remember us? We're those guys. Bye. <laughs> They're off again. Uh, but that's fine. Uh, it was just a nice little touch to see them back. And Lebro lives, which is fantastic. Um, but other than that, the only story development really was the sh final showdown, which is like the last boss of the chapter with Roche. Uh, Roche, of course, we he's not called Roche in this game, but he, it's, there's a character called Roche that's in FF7 uh, Remake, which is uh, the worst character. <laughs> People are going to be mad in the comments like, he's our king. My live chat believes Roche is king because he's so cool. He's so very, very cool. Oh, he's cool. Uh, but we, the final showdown with Roche, who actually has the exact same story arc as Sid. Uh, unfortunately, they didn't do anything fun with this character. He knew all about the foul sea. He knows they want to kill Cocoon, but, like, they're the gods, so it must make sense, right? Uh, so he went along with it until his dying breath, in which he's like, nah, this is just bad. I, I knew it was bad all along. Please go and save Cocoon. That would be nice. And you're like, okay, cut short. And then he suicides with a grenade to block the path for the rest of the enemies to get you. And then they pulled the classic FF thing, which I really like, actually. I think this is a great move, which is where, and in this game, it's very on the nose where it literally opens portals and it's like hey you can either go back and start doing the end game now or you can just push forward and do the last boss all right so obviously i want to check out the end game i'm super curious about how the end game of all the final fantasies plays out because it's always wildly different you know you've got eight which is like there's all kinds of crazy stuff going on go collect frogs with quinna or whatever it might be is that nine that was nine. Eight has got all rumbly stuff around the world that you can go and check out what's going on. Uh, so I went back and it teases you very quickly with what the end game probably has to offer by having a cutscene where I have to assume it's Titan, uh, Mecha Titan. Mecha Titan spawns in the plains and he's stomping around. I know we can get Chocobos I because the game literally told us with the uh, little robot friend that we found in Urba and uh, these yellow points are around. So I was like kind of curious. Now, one thing I always do in these games is I don't look up what you're supposed to do. It's part of my commentary and learning for when I eventually review the game is how is the end game presented to the player assuming you didn't have the internet when this game came out. It's all good that like, this game is years old and you can go and wiki it. You can find out every single specific thing in the world and exactly how to do it in the most efficient manner and you should have these best weapons. If you use this setup, it kills the boss in two seconds, blah, blah, blah. That's not what we would have done in a nice casual playthrough of the game and it's not how the game presents itself, right? That's stuff that's discovered over years and years. Um... Hmm, yeah. <laughs> from what I can tell after digging into this for a few hours is it's just a kind of mindless grind and then there'll be some reward with big bosses later on. Um, my first maneuver here was to go to the plains because that was full of high level enemies that we couldn't fight earlier in the game uh, and investigate the plains because uh, we're stronger now so we should be able to take on a lot of the enemies and we can, not everything, but we could kill a lot. And the first thing it did is a lot of frisbee people have spawned and you can get hunts for them. Okay. I kind of assumed that the planes would have the chocobo farm in it or whatever to get chocobos. That would make some sort of logical sense because it's a big open area. There's probably a place in there. But of course, there's no human life on uh, the pulse. They've all turned to seeth. And so 
I didn't find anything with chocobos. I was walking around for a really long time. I explored every square inch of the plains. I found some little sneaky areas where there's turtle friends and things like that. I found sabotenders, uh, which I believe, because the game doesn't indicate anything to you, are just like an infinite XP farm and probably drop something good. Uh, you can let them dance for a while and they will grow. So you can either kill an easy version, a medium version, or a, a hard mode. Uh, by just letting them dance and grow so it'll dance once go medium then it'll dance again it'll go large uh, the large ones we can't kill them efficiently we did figure out how to kill them uh, but they give 15,000 experience all the time which is not a lot for the time investment of killing them at this point like each each little segment of the level is something like 30 to 40k experience something pretty ridiculous at this point uh, so that would just be a grind to do that uh, the hunts are broken up into classes there's like c b and a uh c's and b's we can do a's we can't do they just kill you in one hit and so you're like okay so we just need to be more hp do more damage more healing more stats essentially um i did not find chocobos in a couple of hours uh so one thing that's become apparent and I, I i always preface our games with this is i do not grind um i don't think it's fun it's bad for stream and it's just not interesting i get why it exists when it's just kind of an end game grind like 10 has an end game grind there is a super boss at the end of it and yeah i know they exist but to get there you basically just need more health more stats uh, in order to survive the fight and get to going and then it'll be a typical kind of fight it might be interesting but it'll be a typicalish fight at that point you're just able to survive the onslaught of the of the fight because it just does more damage than your health bar simple as that right it's kind of boring um I'm, I'm always interested in fun and engaging side content jumping puzzles in like 15 uh things like that little side quests that are going on some grand encounters that you can jump straight into and then you can work up to other things love that that's so great it gives us more uh flowing growing end game without being directly tied to a story campaign this is more of like get more experience and it didn't help that a lot of the hunts clearly repeat because there's a relatively limited enemy variety in the game uh typically you'll find soldier a who wears like red and then there's like a slightly redder version and then a blue version and then a bluer version but it's kind of the same guy uh this they hit harder and have more health etc throughout the game and so within a few hunts it was apparent that they're just using the same enemy types again but the class b has less hp less damage than the class a but it's the same enemy that you're fighting that kind of does the same skills uh that all is a roundabout way of saying i'm probably not going to engage with the end game of 13 as i said i understand why it exists back in the day when these games coming out and even today for some people is you are a one game a year or once every six month kind of get kind of guy right when i was a kid if i bought a game or i asked for a game for my birthday that game needed to last me maybe until my next birthday so yes an end game that involves just jumping in killing mobs getting stronger getting super powerful weapons and things like that would be fine it would be absolutely fine i wouldn't have an issue with it because i'm not likely to get another game until then that's not the life i live right now uh, and unless i'm engaged with it there's no reason for me to take part in just grinding out very strong characters it's just not fun and i'd rather play something else so i will um so yes i, I will leave it there as it's very apparent it's kind of just a grindy grindy go and kill get more money get money upgrade more stuff get more experience get stronger then you can tackle class b's and class a's and then you can go and do the super boss at the end uh blah 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 blah, blah. so that means that our next stop will be the finale of the game i did want to touch on the upgrade system well uh, i haven't talked about it a lot in our episodes it's horrible uh real shame here it reminds me very much of like uh world of warcraft circa battle for azeroth where blizzard was of the opinion that if we put hundreds of options in then that's depth right <laughs> No, no, it's not particularly fun. Uh, FF13's upgrade system is incredibly basic. Two resources, one that gives very little experience but adds an XP multiplier. So you plow that in until you get a three times multiplier. And then you have an item that drains the multiplier but gives massive amounts of experience. So you want to get a 3x multiplier and then you want to pile as many of an item in because it all benefits from the 3x to get the weapon up there. And you also don't know how much experience you need to get to where you need to be because you have to kind of guess. So if it has 26 levels, level one might be 1500 XP, but it gets more. So it gets more each level. So you're kind of working it out. It's like, oh, maybe this is like 70,000 experience. Then you put it in, it gets to level 25 or 26 and you've lost the multiplier. So you need to apply more multipliers into it, blah, blah, blah. Uh, needless to say, I wasn't super shocked that a website has been created, which is an FF13 experience calculator for this system. 
I usually do not use any... I just want to address this. I, I typically do not use any third-party resources while we're doing these games. But in this case, uh, sure, you can call it a mental loophole, whatever. Uh, it makes total sense, because the only way I could do this in-game would be to save the game, because you often don't know the results of what will happen with upgrading equipment. And it's very expensive. You don't know whether this item will turn into something different, because some of them do. Uh, some of them will upgrade and suddenly become like First Strike, like the Aurora Scarf. Some of them won't. They'll just give you a minute uh, damage prevention buff uh, for a lot of resources. You've no idea. Some of the weapons are a bit strange, and maybe they turn into Excalibur or something. I have no idea. <laughs> but the only way of testing that is to save the game, level it up, see what happens. Is this something you want or don't want or don't care about? And then reload the game and do it again. That's the only other way I could possibly do this process, which is boring and cumbersome and time consuming so um it makes more sense to check what it's going to become uh, at this point just to save time more than anything else and obviously save a little bit of money on resources so i used the calculator upgraded basic items like more strength more magic i mean that works overall and consistently and weapons and did that but it's a terrible upgrade system not a fan of it uh it's just it's just another farming resource that's what i look at these as if you're constantly going to give me resources to upgrade stuff it's just more farming. It's farm, 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 farm. It's fine. It's just not for me. Uh, so that's it. So that's, I, I, in terms of story content, not much going on. Uh, we're just at the end game now. I'm sure there's going to be some massive grand finale, given the level of cutscenes and stuff in the game. Uh, but in terms of the end game, had a look at it. Not for me. Got to leave it there. So our next episode will be the finale before we do our final thoughts on the game. All right. Some of you might have been expect, like, be disappointed when not going to be looking at the super bosses, but I hope you understand why. Uh, I don't need to kill every super boss to say I've experienced the game. That's not part of how I feel about it. Uh, so I'm fine with it. There it is. All right. So I'll see you in the grand finale, which will be coming up tomorrow, probably. Bye, guys.